And so I saw this video this morning and I'm just like, oh man, really? Are you for real? You know, have you ever seen two people arguing and neither one of them know what they're talking about? Well, that is what happened on this video. Now, this video is a video that was posted on David Lynn's channel. For those of you who don't know, David Lynn is a pastor from Toronto, Canada. He was the one that was out on the street preaching. Uh, he goes out on the street a lot preaching, and he was the one that was arrested for preaching in Toronto. So this video is not a video of him. It's probably one of his assistants or associates or interns. Uh, so it's not him. It's not David Lynn himself. Uh, but there's this guy that's preaching, okay? And this girl comes up to him and is objecting to his preaching, you know, objecting to the faith, just basically saying, you know, that uh, uh, there are not many w women in the Bible. You know, there are only two women in the Bible, she said. She goes on to bring this objection, and this preacher responds. Watch this. Pardon? I can't hear you. Say what you said. What? What's, what's male son? There's only two women in it. No, there's many, many, many women in the Bible. Judith and There's no, I don't think, there's nobody named Judas. I have read the Bible. There was a prophet named Deborah. There's no book in the Bible named Judith. There's no book in the Bible named Judith? There's no book in the Bible named Judith. Really? There's no book in the Bible named Judith. Last I checked, there was. So here's my Bible. This is the Orthodox Study Bible. And I'm just going to open it up. I mean, last time I checked, there was a, a book by the name of Judith. I'm sure I read it who knows how many times. Okay, so it's the Orthodox Study Bible. And we got uh, uh, the uh, Table of Contents here. Table of Contents. Now, in the Old Testament here, it says the Old Testament. If you look down here, um, let me see. Oh, wait a second. There it is. Judith, right there. The book of Judith in the Bible, in what they call here the Old Testament. Notice here, there is no Apocrypha section here in this Bible. The books that is normally counted in the Apocrypha in the Catholic Bible is included in the regular uh, sections of this Bible. There is no Apocrypha division in this Bible, although all the Apocryphal books are also included here. So this is the Orthodox Bible, and there it is right there. What did he mean, there is no book of Judith in the Bible? There's no book in the Bible named Judith. Now, I know this guy is very, very familiar with the Protestant Bible. But, I mean, here he is on the street preaching publicly. He should know a little bit about Christianity that's beyond just the Protestant Bible. In fact, there are 12 different Bible canons. Okay, so I'm not talking about Bible versions. I'm talking about Bible canons. Now, the word canon literally means rule, as in a set of rules. But when someone talks about Bible canons, they're talking about different sets of books, okay? The Protestant church has their Bible canon. In their Bible, they have a certain set of books. The Catholics have a different Bible canon. They have a different set of books. They have the exact same as what the Protestant has, plus extra books. Same with the Orthodox. But did you know that there are at least 12 different Bible canons? Again, we're not talking about versions here, okay? We're not talking about the NIV versus the RSV versus the NLT versus the YLT. No, we're talking about Bible canons, not translations, canons. What is actually included in the Bible? What books are actually included in the Bible? Here's a table that you can find on Wikipedia, and this lists here 12, okay, 12 different Bible canons. We got the Protestant over here. We got the Lutheran, the Anglican, the Roman Catholic. We got seven different Orthodox churches and an Assyrian church, all with their own canons. Each one of these churches have different canons. In other words, different books that are included in their Bible. Now, if I were to scroll down here and find the book of Judith, here's the book of Judith right here. Okay, you see that out of the 12 different canons, nine of them include the book of Judith. 
That means that the majority of Bible canons include the book of Judith. Yet we have a street preacher out on the street that don't know about the book of Judith. Doesn't know that the book of Judith is in the Bible. Yes, it's in the Bible. It's in nine out of the 12 different Bible canons. And as you saw earlier, a lot of those Bibles don't have the book of Judith in a different category, but some of them do. Some of them have the book of Judith in what they call the Apocrypha, and that's especially found in the Catholic versions of the Bible, okay? So the Apocrypha is a separate section. They got the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. Again, don't forget that the books that are in the Apocrypha section in the Catholic Bible are not necessarily in that section at all in the Orthodox Bible. It's like it's it's read alongside all the other books, not separate at all. But in the Catholic Bible, we got the book of Judith in the Apocrypha. The word Apocrypha means hidden. Now, the whole idea of the Apocrypha is to have a different category of books that are hidden from the common man, okay? So there are books that are considered to be, okay, these books are, are for everybody. Then there are books that are not for everybody, but only for the very wise, only for the very spiritually discerned, for those who are really spiritual, who are able to digest the books, okay? So the Apocrypha is specifically named the Apocrypha, hidden, because it's supposed to be hidden out of the sight of the common eyes. It's supposed to be only for those who are really ready to read this really rich stuff. For any Bible publisher to publish a Bible without the books of the Apocrypha in it is really doing a grave injustice to anybody who is serious about Bible study. The books of the Apocrypha were written far before the coming and the birth of Jesus. And when you realize that, that the books of the Apocrypha were written before the books of the New Testament, then you understand that a lot of the New Testament doctrine is based upon the Apocrypha. A lot of the New Testament doctrine actually comes from the Apocrypha. I know some people would be reading the Apocrypha and say, oh, wait a second, that's what Jesus said. Oh, wait a second, that's what it says in the book of 2 Peter. Oh, here's what it says in the book of, of, of Hebrews. Oh, here's another thing that Jesus said. They must have copied from Jesus. They must have copied from Peter. They must have copied from the book of Hebrews. But when you understand that the books of the Apocrypha were written long before the New Testament, then you realize that the opposite is true. In fact, the book of Hebrews is just packed full of Apocrypha. I mean, I can make a video several hours long just on the book of Hebrews alone and how that corresponds with the Apocrypha and how really much of what the book of Hebrews says comes right directly out of the Apocrypha. For example, it says in the book of Hebrews that God makes his angels ministers unto those who would inherit salvation. That's right out of the Apocrypha. Another example, it says that the angels are the great cloud of witnesses, that the great cloud of witnesses includes the angels. In other words, the angels are always watching. They are the watchers. And for those of you who are a little bit familiar with, let's say, for example, the book of Enoch, which I know is not really in the Apocrypha, but it is in the other sacred texts, and that comes right out of the book of Enoch. Another example is when Jesus was asked about the woman who had seven husbands and they all died. I mean, how many people have seven husbands, one after another, after another, after another, after another, and they all just died, one after another, after another, seven of them. They asked Jesus, which one will she be married to in the resurrection? Do you realize that the whole story of the woman with the seven husbands comes right out of the book of Tobit? That is in the Apocrypha. We can go on and on and on and on. And God willing, I will make another video uh, detailing all of the coincidences between the Apocrypha and the New Testament. But there's a lot of people today that are KJV only people. Okay, there's a lot of people, I'm sure maybe some of you know people that are like, you know, the only Bible that's the true Bible is the King James Bible. Well, most of these KJV only people don't even know 
that the original King James Bible had the Apocrypha in it. I spoke with somebody who said, you know, the King James Bible is the only true Bible. It's the only Bible. It's the most accurate Bible around. And one of the reasons is because how King James put very strict orders on his translators. I mean, those translators, those Bible translators and editors had to do a perfect job or else basically they'd be dead, okay? And so a lot of these KJV only people don't even know that the original King James Bible had the Apocrypha in it. And according to John Castle's Illustrated History of England by William Howitt in 1859, published in 1859, it says that while King James was reviewing his Bible with his translators and editors and so on and so forth, someone kind of whispered in his ear, well, you know, the Apocrypha, we were kind of like doubting the Apocrypha. And he got absolutely irate with them. He was angry with them. Don't even mention it. Don't even, don't even say that the Apocrypha should not be included in the Bible. King James himself was very angry at the notion that the Apocrypha should be excluded from church service. Now here's a picture of the old King James Bible table of contents. And as you see, the books called Apocrypha are in it. In fact, Protestant scholar, <laughs> Protestant scholar, E.G. Goodspeed wrote, Whatever may be our personal opinions of the Apocrypha, it is a historical fact that they formed an integral part of the King James Version. And any Bible claiming to represent that version should either include the Apocrypha or state that it is omitting them. Otherwise, a false impression is created. And that is taken from the story of the Apocrypha published by the University of Chicago Press, 1939, page 7. Not only did the original King James Bible have the Apocrypha in it, but it also had cross-references, many cross-references to the Apocrypha. In fact, the original King James Bible contained 113 cross-references to the Apocrypha. So the editors of the original King James Bible believed, at least in part, that the New Testament was based on the Apocrypha. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into this right now because it is a huge subject, but I just want to whet your appetite that the apocryphal books, the deuterocanonical books, and many of the other sacred texts, especially those texts that were found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, are a very, very important part of the faith. Until next time, I always keep seeking God. Seek Him with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things.